this thing does not want to <laughs> grip. Ladies and gentlemen, we got an interesting three-way today. And what guy doesn't like a nice three-way? We got a Supra, a Cayman, and a BMW M2. We're going to start with the most familiar of the three, the Porsche Cayman 718 GTS. Part of the reason we have to start with the Cayman is because this is the benchmark. The Porsche Cayman is what Toyota used to benchmark their own car when designing the Supra. And it's a benchmark for a reason. It is incredibly balanced. We've already made a dedicated video about this exact car earlier on this channel, link in the description. Now this is the GTS, not the 4.0. So we have a 2.5 liter flat four turbocharged. And actually all three of these cars today are gonna to be turbocharged. All less than 100K. This is gonna be the most expensive of the bunch. It's optioned out quite handsomely. Full details about all these cars are in the description as always. Uh, Porsche interior. A nice familiar place to be. Great ergonomics, great seating position. We're actually gonna start this with PASM off, sport exhaust, sport plus. The weather is pretty crazy today, so we're not gonna be pushing it too hard. We got snow out here in the Bay Area. Born and raised here from 1990, I've never seen snow like this. Craziness. Porsche Cayman. Precision and balance. That's how I would summarize this car. As soon as you get in, everything just feels the storms are not kind to these roads. Everything just feels right and buttoned down and tight. One of the best EPS racks out there. Great accuracy, great weighting, great steering speed, the ratio. And the hardest part is the feedback. Not as good as a properly dialed in hydraulic, but one of the best EPS racks that you can buy right now. Of squirreliness from the rear end because we have very low traction today. It's just so easy to heel toe, to rev match. That was a double clutch. Yeah, double clutching in this car, a cinch, that immediate throttle response. Even though it has a turbo, they did a great job dialing in this motor. I mean, obviously you've got to get the flat six NA if you can, but what they did with this flat four turbo is very impressive. Favorable power to weight ratio as well. We got around less than 3,100 pounds and around 365 horsepower, which is very adequate for this car. It feels balanced. You're not wanting for more. Very easy to modulate, the nice initial grab, very progressive. They're not they're not like the logarithmic, like we've had some cars where no brakes and all of a sudden full brake. This just feels dialed in. This just feels like an extension of you. It does exactly what you want it to do. And with that mid-engine, this is the one mid-engine car out of this three-way comparison, you have a nice polar moment of inertia. So it rotates around you. And that contributes to the car feeling so stable. Part of it is having a very low center of gravity as well with that flat six. It's a stable, planted, fairly serious car. so easy and so effortless. You're not misshifting with this car. The heel toe rev matches are second nature. The one thing is that this, the shifter, I mean, look at this. It reminds me of one of those, you know those gas station with the fans and the, the cylinders, those guys that kind of like wave around. It's all loosey goosey. What's going on here, Porsche? Come on. 
Porsche can make a much better uh, transmission. It's not it's not bad by any means, but I mean we have three really drivers focused cars today, and this is just surprising me. personality that's not what the Porsche is about Porsches are about being proper precision balance yeah we're getting a little bit of throttle steer such low traction conditions the car inspires confidence that very few can match Struts front suspension. Porsche does such a good job tuning it that you wouldn't even know. It's not prone to understeer as you load up those front wheels. Because again, with double wishbone, you can get that negative camber as that as the, the wheel loads up. Not a problem here. Oh, I love that throttle rotation. There we go. Of course, all three of these cars have LSDs as standard, as they should, any performance vehicle. Oh yes. You know, the lower traction conditions are not ideal when you want to push a car, but if you're trying to determine how a car behaves, you're lowering the ceiling of that traction limit. So you can actually get a little bit of oversteer, dance with that limit at lower speeds with throttle input at corner exit. And this car is very neutral. You're not gonna be holding slides with it. It's more like it's gonna step out and quickly correct. The other two cars in this comparison are a little bit more in the direction of drift missile, if that's what you're going after. Well, let's test the acceleration. such that it, it uh, dampens your throttle response. You just feel a little bit of a surge of power, but it doesn't die off in the, in the top end like many turbocharged engines do. It feels more linear than the average turbo, and I do appreciate that very much so. Oh God, I just love double clutching this car. It's so easy. So seamless. All right. We've got the 718 Cayman out of the way. We've established the benchmark, and now it's time for the BMW M2. Next up, we got the 2018 BMW M2. This is before they came out with the M2 competition in subsequent years. And this out of the three is gonna be the cheapest. You can buy one of these used for around 35 to $40,000. You're getting the Supra for about 55 to 60K new. And that Cayman GTS we just drove is around $75,000 
uh, today. This and the Supra are both on Pilot Super Sports, which is essentially the predecessor to the PS4S's, which are on the Cayman. But this car is bone stock. One thing I forgot to say earlier is that that Cayman, part of the reason the brakes felt so nice is that it has Frodo 111 pads, which are not OEM. But this and the Supra are bone stock through and through. First things first, guys, you gotta remember this out of the three is not a dedicated sports car. Two plus two, it's the most practical in that sense, but you already sit a little bit higher. You can tell this is not a bespoke sports car built from the ground up. You're taking a two series and then adding to it to make it feel more hot rod. Another thing that's kind of weird is that the seat is actually shifted and kind of rotated. You're not pointing straight forward, which is strange. We're gonna have this in sport mode, but we're gonna leave traction control on because as you can see, the conditions today are a little bit less than ideal. When this car first came out, I was smitten. I was like, this is my new dream car because, you know, I used to love the E36 and E46 M3s and then M3s and M4s after that just got a little bit large and bloated. And this was bringing it back to, you know, the, the size and proportions of those original BMWs that we all grew to love. Now, while this does have a nine inch longer wheelbase than the Supra, it's still a pretty compact car. That more speaks to how small the Supra is. This car is also the heaviest of the three. 3,450 pounds. Powered by the N55 engine before they went to the S55 for the M2 Comp. But this is still pushing out around 365 horsepower. But the 3,450 pounds is a little bit chunkier than we would like, especially when the competition, these two other cars, are a bit lighter. So getting into this after that Cayman, these throws feel a mile long. That Cayman already had a little bit longer throws than I would like, and this feels even longer than that. You still have that rubbery texture that is, uh, BMW is notorious for, let's just say that. Steering is pretty dead, I gotta say. Out of the three, the Cayman definitely has the strongest steering. This steering does not have the best feedback. It's not as fast of a ratio as the Supra. Not too light though. I guess the weighting is better than I would expect. But I wish it, I wish it would talk to me a little bit more. feels a little bit more old school turbo. Oh, getting a little bit of throttle induced oversteer. This car is very eager to rotate. This is the most hooligan of the three for sure. This one just wants to be silly and playful and have a good time. Whereas the Cayman is like, all right, let's get down to business. Not quite as dialed in with suspension. We're feeling a little bit, a little bit harshness over some bumps. It's not the smoothest road, of course. But even these OEM brakes, they're decent. They're not as nice as that Porsche, again, that had the uh, Frodo 111 pads. But I feel like I have enough stopping power. Good initial bite. Easy to heel toe, good pedal placement, good ergonomics there. And the throttle response, even though it's turbocharged, it it's not a problem for rev match downshifting. And even heel towing, I was doing that on the way up here. Yeah, it's a piece of cake. Now this engine is the predecessor to that B58 that's in the Supra. Both are inline six, both three liters, both turbocharged with a twin scroll. But this engine feels a little bit more old school with the turbo behavior in that the B58 pulls from anywhere. This one will build a little bit more once you pass around 3,000 RPM. And 
this also has the most lag out of the three. It's not terrible turbo lag. It's part of the fun, it's part of the theater. But that Porsche feels almost N.A. And that Supra turbo lag is also pretty minimal. Woohoo! This thing does not wanna <laughs> grip. They're just like, hey, can we slide now? Can we slide now? It's like an eager little dog just wanting to play constantly. is not quite as sharp and immediate as the Cayman. The Cayman definitely feels the, the sharpest there. And the Supra, while it's very darty, I think a large part of that is the fast steering ratio. The turn in here is, as expected, I mean, again, this is a tarted up two series rather than a dedicated sports car. Driving dynamics wise, this feels a little bit, a little bit compromised compared to the other two but not in a terrible way. It's the semi-practical car. In a pinch, you can use the two rear seats. It's the most comfortable to get in and out of because it has the highest seating position. Visibility is far improved over the Supra, which isn't really saying much, if I'm being honest. But it wants to have a good time. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And for thirty-five dollars to $40,000, that's a pretty good deal. You're getting a lot of car for that dollar amount. And we look at the Supra and the Cayman, they're both substantially more. The question is, is it worth that premium? I'll tell you that. But it's not slow either. And that, again, it feels a little bit more old school turbocharged with the engine behavior compared to the other two. And the engine note too is a little bit more muted than I would like. Those two stir the emotion a little bit more when you bury your foot into the throttle. Some people don't like the chunky M steering wheels, but I gotta say, if you have larger hands, it definitely feels really good. All right, with that out of the way, let's see how she compares to the BMW Supra. And finally, we're in the 2023 Toyota Supra with a six-speed manual transmission we've all been waiting for, hallelujah. Exterior styling that is polarizing, attention grabbing. I already got a lot of comments on this car. I personally like it. It's not as beautiful as the FT1 concept on which it is based because the hard points, things like, things that you can't move, um, things like the the tops of the struts, strut towers, all that stuff, those racing, those hard points, you can't really move. So they had to change the dimensions a little bit, make it fit over this. That's a looker, man. It's definitely a looker. Gorgeous blue paint as well. Big thanks to Fenton Sun from the Zy Green YouTube channel, who's actually sitting shotgun with us today. What's up? For making this review possible. Big thanks to Bjorn for his Cayman and Julio for letting us drive his BMW M2. Don't forget Toyota, man. Big thanks to Toyota for hooking it up with the Supra. Press car life. 
Press car life. All right, this is the third one. The third and final in our three-way comparison. We are in sport mode. We have rev mount off. I think we have the suspension in comfort, even though it's in sport. Suspension so. is in comfort because this road is garbage. Thank you, Fenton. So you did a three-way comparison as well. I did. I guess my initial impressions of this car compared to the other two, when I first got into the car, I was like, damn, I love me some Supra. And it's still a fantastic car. But as you were saying earlier, as we were driving up here, each car kind of fits its price point. Uh, you know, current, MS uh, current price is not MSRP because the M2, similar MSRP to this, granted that's the M2, not the M2 comp that we were comparing. But the Porsche, it does feel like it is a step above the other two. Now the Supra is powered by six cylinder, turbocharged B58, pushing out 382 horsepower, the direct descendant of that N55 motor that's in the M2. That's also a three liter straight six, turbo twin scroll. But the interesting thing is that, unlike the M2, this is a dedicated sports car based on the Z4. Of course, shared platform, Z4 and Supra, hence the name Supra. This does feel much more dedicated sports car than that M2. You don't have any rear seats. The car is actually significantly smaller and a little bit lighter. We're shaving about 200 pounds and the wheelbase is nine inches shorter makes this car very rotation happy, especially on throttle input. I haven't driven the Z4 yet, but I hear the steering in this is better, but it's still nowhere near as good as that Porsche. Would you agree, Fenton? Oh, absolutely. As far as electric power steering systems go, Porsche is still at the top of the food chain. the king. Definitely better than M2 steering, which isn't really saying much. Now in terms of chassis tuning, I think the, the 718 is just so well dialed in. The Supra is also, I mean, both the Supra and the 718 have adaptive suspension. And the Supra handles itself very well. You have pretty good body control. It's not getting upset by this less than ideal surface. But that M2, non-adaptive non suspension, can get a little bit crashy at times. It feels like it, I mean, it is an older generation vehicle, and it feels that way too. What do you think? I would think this, I would say the Supra suspension, whether you're in the normal mode or the sport mode, it's a more GT-tuned suspension compared to the Cayman. The Cayman, again, like you were saying earlier, really does feel like a dedicated sports car platform. While the Supra technically is as well, it's somewhere in between the M2 and the Cayman in terms of how purpose-built it feels. And that carries forth with the suspension, the steering, pretty much everything. It's like those cars, as we were discussing before, they they very much they very much are fitting in at their price points. Like this feels like the mid-tier between the three vehicles. Yeah. If that M2 the, feels like it, it feels like it would be the cheapest. Yeah, if you look at the price points today. A used M2 2018 model year, right around 35 grand. The right. Supra starts at around 55. This Thank one you. is 58. So about 20k difference. And then the 718 GTS, the 2018, that's about a 75k car. And I would say in, at all three price points, relative to each other, you get what you pay for. I totally agree with that. Getting into the Supra, I was so enamored with it, but that that came and does feel like it's a tier above. It does. I mean, there's a reason that, that Toyota, Tadasan, he said that they were looking, they were benchmarking the Cayman when they were designing the Supra. Right. It's just that good. Now, of course, when it comes to what you're looking for in the driver engagement and the feel and the, how playful the car is, the Supra is definitely more playful than the Cayman. It's, um, it's more willing to rotate. I mean, you have an FR platform, which tend to be more playful than MR anyways. Yeah. 
And it is a little bit twitchy because it has such a short wheelbase. But that twitchiness can actually be, it depends on how you look at it. Some would say, hey, this is kind of sketch, this is kind of razor edge. Others would say, you know what? That's fun, that's what I want. I want to be able to easily rotate the car with my throttle. shift you know I was worried that it was gonna be very BMW that it would just be rubbery long throws no clutch feel the clutch isn't as good as that Porsche 718 but it's definitely better than a standard BMW better than the M2 and the actual gear shift you can also tell that Toyota worked some of their Japanese magic on it it's not just a slotted in BMW unit. They actually took a uh, ZF casing, put in their own bespoke internals and gearing. And the shift action, it's not as, I mean, I definitely prefer the GR Corolla and the GR86, but this is pretty good. It has not terribly long throws. It's pretty positive. It's not too rubbery. See, I actually slightly prefer this over the GR86 transmission. Oh, and why's that? I think it has a slicker feel going into each gate. Whereas the GR86 and BRZ transmission almost feels like there's a bit of a catching point when you're halfway into a gate. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think this one is just a little bit more fluid. This is definitely slicker, I agree. That there's not, there's not much resistance. I guess it depends on just preference. I'm not sure which one would be better or worse. Maybe because I'm used to the GR86, that's why I prefer it. But this feels pretty nice and tight. This is definitely better than the Cayman transmission, actually. The Cayman is very loose, and sometimes you're like, wait, where, where am I right now? It's got a floppy feel to it. This feels a lot... Just tighter. Yeah, it's, it's tighter, for sure tighter. less lateral slop. Out of the three cars, I think easily, hands down, this is the best trans. I agree with that. Out of the three, best transmission by far. Now the gearing with this six-speed versus the automatic eight-speed, Final drive ratio in this is more aggressive, 3.45, or sorry, 3.42, up from 3.15 in the automatic. But the individual gear ratios, they are longer. So overall, you get a hit with your MPG and with your acceleration. It's a five miles per gallon hit. That's huge. Oh, is it that big? Yeah. Wow. I was expecting more like three or four MPG. It's pretty bad. I think this thing is rated at 27 on the freeway and then 21 mixed. As I'm shifting this more, I see what you're saying about, it's pretty tight. It's not as, um, it's slicker as you're saying. It's not as notchy yeah. as the GR86. You know, overall, I think if you're getting a manual transmission, all three of the GR triplets, I haven't driven the Yaris yet, so I can't speak to that. But GR Corolla, GR Supra, GR86 all have really nice feels to their gear selectors. I'd be happy with anyone. This engine, also the B58, just hauls ass. So I love much it. Torque. <laughs> it's torque anywhere you want and minimal lag. Definitely less lag than the M2. It's similar to the, the Porsche, actually. And the that, way I describe it, it's like it feels like a four, four and a half liter engine with no turbos for the most part. I mean, it almost feels low, naturally aspirated, yeah. To, yeah, down low, like at a thousand RPM, you'll feel a little bit of lag, but once you have it above like two grand, pretty linear. Yeah, definitely pretty linear. Pulls hard. 382, it's still underrated. It's like, it's, uh, it's this is for sure an over 400 horsepower engine. Yeah. It's bonkers. And when this car weighs only, what, 3,300 pounds, 3,340? Yeah. With right the manual there. configuration, 3,380 in the automatic. It's a pretty solid power to weight it's ratio. It's a great power to weight ratio. I can't complain. I think in a straight line, what do you think about this compared to the Boxster, uh, or the Cayman GTS, rather? Like, once you're hooked up, traction, taking traction out of the equation. I think this pulls harder. I think it does, too. Yeah. But the Cayman, I, I think the Cayman still feels very balanced. I don't feel like the Cayman is slow at all. No, it's still know. like it's still a quick fun fast car this car I feel like depending on the road depending where you're at it can feel like a little bit too much power actually Yeah, it's very easy to overwhelm the rear tires very easy 
Cool, so overall, out of the three, which one would you pick? Ooh, given that it was my own money. Your own money. Well, I'll tell you what I wouldn't pick. I actually would not get the M2, even at 35 grand. You know, I used to think, actually just yesterday, before I drove the M2, I was like, man, those cars have come down in price so much. Actually, one just sold on Bring a Trailer for $28,000 with a DCT. And I was like, that is the, the value proposition of the year, in my opinion. But now that I've driven one, after driving the Supra, after driving the 718, it just feels like a, a subcompact, normal BMW that's, tarted that's up. got a bunch of stuff thrown at it. That's what it is. Which is exactly It's not what a dedicated sports car, yeah. so that's the big compromise you're making there. But you're saving a lot of money. I you agree. It's not, it's not the compromise I want to make. If I'm going to have a practical vehicle and a sporty car, I don't want to compromise at all on my sporty car. Right. If I needed only one vehicle, I see the appeal if you need the two seats, but based on my situation right now, I don't need that. So then, between Supra and Cayman, which one takes your money? Okay, so here's where it gets a lot more challenging to answer that question, because for me, and you know me well, I love front engine rear drive. <laughs> I love the fact that this car can't really put the power down in some situations, whereas the Cayman just puts the power down 99% of the time. Even on the wet, I was hauling ass in the Cayman more so than I could in the other cars. But that technical proficiency also makes it just a little bit... Boring. Boring, a little bit stale. Yep. This car gets my heart rate pumping a little bit faster. I think you and I are very much aligned in our preference for over, power oversteer and being able to sustain that. The Cayman is so neutral that you can kick the tail out, but then you bring it back in. You're not yeah. holding slides with that car. Yeah. What I would say is 75K, I would still, like that Cayman, I wouldn't choose because the GTS 4.0 exists. Now you need to shell out extra cash for the GTS 4.0. You get the, new, the naturally aspirated flat six and that transforms the car in a good way. Yeah. That versus this, obviously, it, it is a higher tier vehicle. It's it's much more expensive. It feels more special on the interior. It's just, it is a more special car. I don't know if I would justify that. This car does give you a lot at the price point. At 55K, I think this car is a bargain. The price gap is huge. Between a GTS 4.0 and a Supra. Yeah, the GTS 4.0 is like 90 plus. Yeah, you're talking 40 grand easily difference. Yeah. What do you guys think? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Much love, my friends and I'll see you guys in the next one. Nice. Pick that up. Thanks, Zaypapi.